Sparkle, everybody. Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be doing something particularly cool, in my opinion, um, and something I haven't done before. Uh, this is going to be a continuation of our series where I'm creating all the BJCP cider styles. And this one is going to be ice cider. I believe it's C2C. I'll put a correction up on here. But this, this uh, before we get started on this, I want to get a few prerequisites out. Uh, in order to do this cider style, you need to either have frozen fruit, uh, frozen apples and press them while they're frozen, or uh, fresh pressed juice that you have frozen in order to cryo concentrate it. The apple variety that I'm using today is going to be a 100% Macintosh apple, uh, not blend, it's just 100% single varietal Macintosh apples. These were picked um, about in the early October timeframe of 2022 and our, uh, a few of uh, our friends in a regional orchard uh, have a bunch of Macintosh apple trees and was able to get an entire five gallon batch out of them. As you can see, uh, this uh, five gallon batch um, is actually, uh, as it expands out, the ice kind of just causes these containers to, to bulge. So if you're going to cryo concentrate things, you want to make sure that you use plastic, uh, preferably something that's been designed for it, like this five gallon PETG. Uh, plastic uh, container that I have here. A couple things about process here. This, uh, the cryo concentration portion of this, so if you're going to go the cryo concentration route, it is, uh, it produces about a quarter of the, you need about a quarter of the amount of juice that you have um, to come out as cryo concentrated juice, which is juice that is at a significantly higher, um, significantly higher sugar content. So the sugar content we're aiming for is 30 bricks or higher, the range of 30 to 35 bricks in order to uh, get a one point, I believe it's 1.130 starting gravity. That's important because we want to have the yeast basically be unable to continue fermenting out. We want it to be that sweet. The end result that we're expecting here is a sweet cider or a sweet ice cider. You need a lot of juice in order to make even a single gallon. So I'm expecting that I'll be getting about a gallon and a quarter of juice in total out of this five gallon, uh, five gallon vessel here. As I kind of go through the, uh, the process of thawing this out uh, in order to get the liquid out, um, the, I'm gonna be taking a specific gravity reading once I get enough juice. I wish I had a refractometer that would make this my life a lot easier, but I don't. So we're going to have to do this um, by, by a, a uh, hydrometer, which is uh, unfortunate, but it's, it's one of the methods here. Um, before we get started on the actual process of things, I need to let this thaw. So what I did is I originally froze this five gallons of Macintosh apple juice and then let it thaw out a little bit so that it got um, to the point where the cryo concentrated juice, the thicker, like you can see here, the darker colored juice here as compared to the lighter colored juice on the bottom over here. The, uh, the cryo concentrated juice, I turned it upside down so that it would refreeze with all this stuff towards the bottom of the spout. So this has been frozen once, thawed slightly, about 50%, and then frozen again upside down so that I can get all the, the, the juice out here that's going to be uh, it's going to be more sugar content. The reason why this works is because the freezing point for uh, a, a juice with uh, uh, the freezing point specifically for the more sugary juice is higher. So it'll melt first than the freezing point of the less sugary juice. So the end, the product that we're going to get out while we thaw this is going to be of a higher sugar concentration as long as it hasn't all melted. So that's the point that we're trying to get here is we're trying to capture this juice while it's thawing. So the reason why I brought it all to one end is because this allows us to get easier extraction of this higher sugar concentration juice. We really want the higher sugar concentration stuff. So while this big old brick of ice and sugar is currently melting, um, I'm going to set it upside down in order to allow it to um, well, get uh, that juice back down to the bottom over here. And then I'm going to take off the lid and start extracting the juice. This will probably take about two hours to get to a point where I can start extracting the juice. Um, and we're just gonna take measurements after that. If it doesn't work out 
as much as well as I expected the first time around. Um, that cryo concentrated juice, say for instance, I get a juice that is not at least 30 bricks to start out with. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just re-add it back to here after I remove the rest of the less concentrated juice and then just reconcentrate it again. That's this is the process. You can do this, I don't want to say a, a, quite a few number of times, but you can at least do this to the point where you concentrate it up to four times. So um, that's what we're going to be doing. I'm going to set, turn this upside down and uh, let all the juice start to, all the uh, more higher sugar content juice just go down towards the bottom, towards our little spout over here. And I'll be back in a couple hours to check on this uh, and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. While that is thawing, let's briefly discuss the style here. And I got the BJCP cider style guidelines right over here. Um, this is style, cider style C2D. It is, uh, it says the cider is made uh, with the juice concentrated before fermentation, either by freezing fruit before pressing, which was the first method I had mentioned, or by freezing juice and removing water, which is the method that we are doing, cryoconcentration. Uh, fermentation stops or is arrested before reaching dryness. Uh, the character differs from apple wine in that cider processes not only increases sugar, hence, in, hence increasing alcohol, but acidity and all the other fruit flavors proportionally. Uh, no additives are permitted in this particular style. In addition, sweeteners may not be used to, to increase gravity. Uh, this style was created in Quebec, Quebec, I believe, um, in 1990. And there's actually a specific name for Quebecan ice cider. Uh, I don't remember what the actual name is. Uh, it's in French. What I've read is that this is typically done in cold areas and we in the Pacific Northwest during winter time. It's really cold right now. Uh, sub thirties. Um, the ideal temperature to ferment at this is anywhere between 40 to 50, it says. So we're, we might get some phenol, um, activity on here from the yeast, but I don't anticipate much because we're, I'm just going to be using Cote de Blanc as the yeast for this and the phenolic activity of that is not really stated. So I don't expect to get any like peppery slash spicy notes from these phenols, but um, it might occur. It's a possibility when you're fermenting this cold, you get more phenol representation rather than ester representation, which are the fruity notes that we would get from our yeast. So that is uh, the general description, the appearance. And this is the most challenging part in my opinion about this. Um, brilliant is the only color that's permittable or the only appearance that's permittable. That is so clear that you can easily like read text on the other end of it. It is exceptionally clear. Um, so this point alone means that I might actually have to filter this, uh, post fermentation to get all the yeast out, which is annoying because the filtering tool that I would like, it costs like $300, um, which is the, uh, Buon Vino mini, um, so if you see me using that, that means that I just sucked it up and bought it for this video and future videos. Um, color is deeper than a standard cider. You can remember how I showed you the uh, cryo concentrated liquid. Uh, it's darker because it has more sugar in it. Um, the, uh, the color is going to be gold to amber. The aroma is fruit sweetie. And then, uh, the flavor is sweet tart fruit sweetie. Well, fruit, Fruity, smooth, and sweet tart is what we should be getting out of the aroma and the flavor. Acidity must be enough to prevent it from being cloying. So the reason why I selected a single varietal of Macintosh is because Macintosh is a nice balance of acidity and sugar content. Um, and that's really what we're going here for is more acidity than would be, uh, not as much as like, say a pink lady, but we want noticeable amounts of acidity in order to kind of carry uh, to cut through that really sh like sweet note that we're going to be getting there. Um, mouthfeel, full body, maybe tannic, but it should be slight, moderate at most. Um, we're, Macintosh does have some tannic property to it. Uh, the Macintosh apples do. They are, I would describe as lightly tannic at best. Um, so that should be able to be easily accomplished here. And um, ingredients, characteristic varieties, usually North American table apples, such as Macintosh or Cortlands. So we are, we are just going by the book on this one. We are using the literal apple they recommended for this variety. Um, entrance must state uh, starting gravity, final gravity, or residual sugar. 
um, and alcohol level. So um, also if you're going to carbonate it, which you can carbonate it, you have to specify which carbonation level you're doing to. I'm not going to carbonate this one. This one's just going to be, um, well, at least I'm not planning on carbonating it right now. Future Kevin might have a different opinion on this. Uh, present Kevin does not want to carbonate this. Um, the only reason why I would carbonate it is if I believe the acid balance is a little bit too low and I want to add some carbonic acid to it by uh, and increase that mouthfeel too. If it, if it has less of a mouthfeel than I would like. Um, okay, so final gravity or original gravity, and this is where the 30 to 35 bricks comes in, uh, 1.130 to 1.180 for original gravity. And for final gravity, it's 1.060 to 1.085. So that is sweet. That is sweeter than your store-bought juice would be. Um, that's a bit nuts. So our yeast here is, it has a maximum range of 13% wheat of uh, yeast. They're not going to follow what the package says. They will ferment out until they're done. So what we're going to do here is we're not going to give them any additional help. Um, and by that, I mean, we're not adding any nitrogen. We're not adding any pectic enzyme. We're not doing anything, no additions in this at all. That's part of the cider style. So this is just going to be um, yeast versus sugar. And if they happen to um, stop, arrest themselves in the middle of fermentation, we're gonna hope it goes somewhere between that seven and 13% range uh, of ABV. That's what we're targeting. This should be a sweet final beverage. It is a dessert beverage. So, um, that, that, that's pretty much it. It's kind of like a, uh, an ice wine would be, but with cider instead. So anyway, this is a lot of talking about the style in order to tell you that this is actually a rather, um, well, I have put a bit of research into this. This is actually, uh, has a lot of areas where things might go awry. So that is why we're doing a nice low and slow fermentation in order to monitor the progress of this, um, and, uh, and kind of make sure that we can intervene if we need to um, by either like cutting down the colony and switching it into a different vessel, kind of similar to how you would do a French style cider or by um, doing a sterile filtration, just stopping it altogether. Um, yeah, that, that, that's pretty much the process here. Uh, we're, we're going to go low and slow and we're going to, uh, we're gonna ferment this out uh, to, uh, to a sweet end product. And uh, hopefully it's brilliant for its final product. If not, we will filter this. Um, anyway, one quick thing here. One of the reasons why I bought these wrapped pills was because it allows me to remotely monitor our fermentation without having to open up our fermentation vessel. So I'm going to be using, um, eh, probably not this exact one, I think I'll be using the orange one. Uh, that a wrapped pill inside here to monitor the specific gravity, temperature, and uh, progress of our ice cider as it gets through its entire fermentation process. So uh, that'll allow me to not have to take samples uh, while this process is going on in order to know if I need to arrest fermentation. Uh, I don't want to arrest fermentation. I would like it to end on its own, but if I need to arrest fermentation, I will. So that's going to be it. We're going to see where we end up with our juices, original gravity. And we're going to go from there. Uh, I'll be back in a couple of hours after this juice has uh, been thawed just a little bit. So, see you then. Okay, it's been a uh, couple of hours since we started our uh, thawing of our juice. So now I'm going to go through the process of starting to extract some of the juice, take an original gravity reading, and uh, you know, put it inside of our fermenter. Okay, we have our sanitized uh, hydrometer and our sanitized uh, graduated cylinder. And we're gonna go ahead and take a sample, see what kind of sugar we're getting. They're not gonna make this easy for me to open, are they? Gigantic pressure difference. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the pressure relief valve up here. And then go ahead and take it up there. Oh no. Oh my goodness. Okay, I just lost a whole bunch that way. Oh, it's not great. Nice sugary substance. All right, 
Christ, darting gravity webs. My goodness. This is one point. It is out of scale. If, if this had an accurate measurement, it would be probably about 1.080. This is heckin' concentrated. I'm going to clean up my mess down here while this is going. I'm going to take a little bit of time here to cut out all these boring parts. In general, what happened here is that the ice cider was melting over the period of time, about the next two hours, and when I am picking up here is when I'm taking my original gravity reading after it melted. Okay, let's go ahead and recommence. Um, we're at just under a gallon. The gallon marks about halfway in between these two lines on our fermenter. Um, the uh, Our gravity that we're seeing here, I uh, just looked at it, but I'll take a look at it again for the camera. It's uh, 1.054, or sorry, 1.154, I'm used to saying zero there. So we are sitting pretty well in a good starting gravity for this. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is, this isn't very much liquid. <laughs> I just wanna make this clear. This is how much liquid we got out for that gravity. This is about three times cryo concentrated. Um, so, this is uh, is probably as good as we're going to get. So, uh, unless we want a bunch of waiting here for another hour and waiting for water to drip, um, I'm going to go ahead and call it good here. Uh, there's a lot of headspace here, but it doesn't matter when we're in primary. Uh, we're going to go pretty much straight from here into bottles. Uh, but right now we're going to put a lid on this, uh, pitch half a packet of yeast before we put the lid on, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, throw in our uh, hydrometer and start the session for it. It's pretty exciting. Um, anyway, gonna go ahead and uh, get started on that front and uh, uh, we'll, we'll check back in a few weeks. One thing that I did not mention here was that I actually made a cider starter using about a pint of the liquid that was remaining to drip out of the frozen uh, juice for a bit of time afterwards. It was a starting gravity of this starter was about 1.150, so it didn't drastically affect the original gravity for the sample at all. Fermentation activity started about on day five of this ferment and proceeded to go at a relatively low pace until around day 15, where it started to accelerate, uh, doing about five gravity points every five days, so gravity point a day. Uh, at about day 45, I needed to basically stall the fermentation, so I racked it into a new vessel and then did a cold crash inside of a fridge that's even colder than the one it was fermenting at to allow it to stall out at about 1.075. After about two weeks cold crashing in the fridge, I decided that it was time to filter this cider because it wasn't completely clear to my satisfaction. So I ran it through my Buon Vino mini jet filter at it with a number two filter and uh, it began to clear up and it was cold crashed for another two weeks after stabilizing it. I stabilized with 50 parts per million potassium metabisulfate and 75 parts per million potassium sorbate. After another week of cold crashing, it was time to bottle the cider. I bottled the cider with my floor corker and as you can see here, the cider turned out brilliantly clear. Hello everybody, welcome back and in today's video we're going to be tasting our ice cider we made. This is a Macintosh single varietal ice cider which I have named Winter Play Day. I'm going to go ahead and open the bottle. It's named after my little baby girl over here. So, if you aren't familiar, well, you, if you're watching this video, you've seen how ice ciders are made. So, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying here. Go ahead and uncork it. Ooh, nice. No carbonation. That's good. Means it wasn't re fermenting. Right, it's actually kind of tricky for ice cider to make sure it doesn't re-ferment. On the pour here, it's very syrupy. I'm gonna do a very small bit of this. It's incredibly syrupy. It's a big cup. Yeah. You should use a little boy. I can smell it from here though. This is a really potent smell. 
Okay. All right. Uh, clarity um, actually has a little bit of uh, remaining kind of yeast that have fallen out of suspension. And otherwise, it's pretty brilliant in clarity. It's a little bit of yeast. This was uh, filtered a little bit, I believe, um, and then kind of stalled intentionally. So. On the aroma, it smells like sweet apples. It smells like, well, it smells like Macintosh apples. It smells almost exactly like that. It's like apple flavor candy. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if apple flavor candy is just Macintosh apples. Buy lentil. All right, let's go ahead and give it a taste. It's calmed down quite a bit since first trying it. It's really smooth. <laughs> no, it's good. It's just a flavor and I'm trying to figure out what it is. It's very tart. Um, it's not as tart as it was when it first got started fermentation or first got bottled. It's kind of mellowed out quite a bit on the tartness. Yeah, so initial tasting is very tart, very sweet. Um, it has a very puckering type of sweetness. Kind of feel it in the back of your mouth a little bit. It's uh, also very tart. Uh, as you drink it, it, kind of makes your mouth start to water because it's so tart. It's it makes you thirsty. Very thirsty, yeah. Um, overall, impression is it's, it's very clean. Send that one into competition. I'm not, I'm never going to send this into competition. This takes too long to make. <laughs> this takes a long time to make. Um, yeah, this is very good. Um, okay. All right. So, I mean, honestly, for a 10 and a half percent cider, I don't really taste like a lot of alcohol. I mean, yeah, I can no, taste some I alcohol. Could, I could drink a lot of this. Yeah get messed up. <laughs> uh, it's very good, in my opinion. I don't really taste any oxidation, don't taste anything that's off. It's like apple syrup. It's like... It is very syrupy. It's alcoholic apple syrup. It's I like it quite a bit. But put it on ice cream. Yeah, or use it as like a, a, a simple syrup mixer for cocktails. Uh, I wouldn't do that because that'd be a waste. Um, <laughs> be a, Ice cream. This is this is very precious to me. This 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 bottle and the six now other bottles that we have that I gave one to a friend for her fortieth. Um, yeah, this is this is a very precious bottle. Um, okay, so I guess we'll go three, two, one, then rating. Oh. Okay. All right. So uh, three, two, one, ten. Nine and a half. This is this is really good. Um, yeah, I would drink the hell out of this. Uh, uh, it's it's probably really good in small doses. I am gonna have to recork it with a little little dachshund corker, um, but it'll probably be gone in a week or so. Um, this is like a special occasion drink. If you have a special occasion, uh, then I would recommend producing that. Or if you can find ice cider in stores, it's probably probably pretty good too. So anyway, uh, this was a nice quick uh, well, evaluation of this ice cider. Uh, would I recommend you make it? No, <laughs> it's good, <laughs> but it's a lot of effort. It's a lot of effort. Um, unless you have the time and patience. Yeah, I would recommend against it. Um, it's very good though. Anyway, I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers. Happy cidering.